everybody. Welcome to Stamping with Melva. I'm Melva Peters and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in British Columbia, Canada. And you can find me online at stampingwithmelva.com. It's Wednesday today and on Wednesdays at two o'clock I jump on and share a technique. Sometimes it's a technique like splattering or watercoloring or something like that. Today I'm actually doing a fun fold or a fancy fold card. I'm doing the pinwheel tower card. Um, I made one of these in my free class uh, a couple of weeks ago. We do one on Monday nights at seven o'clock Pacific. You can join me on Zoom and we'll make a card together. And so we did um, a similar card to this. It's a pinwheel tower card. And I thought that I would share it. It's been a while since I've done one of these. And so there's a few tips and tricks um, to this card. At least I found a few things that I did wrong on the first one that I made. So I'm going to use another sneak peek from the upcoming uh, January to April mini catalog. Hi, Deborah. Um, called Be My Valentine. And it's such an adorable sweet. It's a punch bundle and I'm a sucker for punches. Um, and so this is a really sweet punch bundle. Now, if you're not into Valentines and that kind of thing, you can use other sentiments or you can use some of these sentiments because um, they're not, I mean... They're kind of Valentine's E, but there's one that says you're as sweet as honey that you could use. Um, but they're just really cute. And so if you don't like those kind of sentiments, you can switch them out. But the, the B is absolutely adorable. And so is the designer series paper. All right. Let me switch over to my desktop and we will get started. All right. So hopefully come back into focus a minute takes a minute once I kind of go off of it. So this is the Be My Valentine. It's actually a suite in the upcoming catalog. Comes with this punch bundle, uh, designer series paper, these really sweet um, adhesive backed flowers and hearts or hearts, hearts and flowers um, embellishments, some sweet sorbet bordered, white bordered ribbon, which is really pretty and lovely to tie with. And then some gorgeous, well, just so cute designer series paper. So these are some of the ones that I chose to use. Look at these bees. They're so, so cute. Um, we've got some uh, honeycomb, some check, and on the other side, some other bees and some, yeah, just really cute. There's more, of course, it's 12 by 12 paper, so there's lots to choose from. Okay, so this is a pinwheel tower card. So here's one that I made in the class. It's going to be a little different than that because I'm going to use um, a little bit different of the designer series paper. Um, but look at this bee that you can stamp and punch out. Just so adorable. Um, so let me show you some tips on making this pinwheel. It stands nicely, but you need to create a base to start with. Okay, so the first piece of cardstock you need, I'm going to grab my paper. because I can't remember all of the sizes. Okay, so you need a piece of cardstock. So I'm using Sweet Sorbet. Hey, Denise, welcome. Oh, nice. My time zone. So this piece of Sweet Sorbet is four and a quarter by five and three quarters. And we're gonna score it at three quarters of an inch one and a half so these score lines are going to form this um, box in the middle uh two and a quarter i'll give you these in just a minute again and three so that was three quarters one and a half two and a quarter and three and that's all the scoring um, that you need to do on this card but what you want to do is form a box and basically take your bone folder and just start folding these kind of in on themselves. So fold into the mountain as always, um, and just kind of fold and burnish. And then they kind of all just go together nicely to form this box in the middle. You can use tear and tape, or you can use liquid glue. I'm just gonna use a little liquid glue. Like that. And I'm just going to kind of wrap this around on itself and then hold it in place until it gets tacky. There we go. And you can fold it flat. This will fold flat. So when you put this in the envelope, it, it folds flat into a regular size card. Sharon? 
Okay, so we've got our our first piece of our um, of our card base, our tower. So when I first made this card, I somehow ended up with one of my my pieces being a different size. This one worked out. So I, I kind of figured out what you do to not have that happen. Um, but I ended up with one of my pieces of designer series paper that I had to trim. So the way I figured out how to put this together, and maybe there's an easier way is I start with my long piece of my first, so the card base we just put together, um, facing me. And now you've got three pieces of sweet sorbet cardstock that are cut two and three quarters by four and a quarter. Pretty sure that's two and three quarters by four and a quarter. And these are going to form the, the uh, sides to our card. So to put them together, if you start with the piece, this long piece facing you, and then put your glue on that one flap or the one side of your box. And then stick this so that it lines up with, could I butt it up against the side and hold it in place until it, it's kind of tacky. And you can kind of bend it back and forth pressing down. Okay, so now you've got it like that. So turn it to, you're going, uh, let's see, you're going to kind of continue around clockwise, but you're going to move it counterclockwise, if that makes sense. So it was like this, and you're going to turn your card, your these these sides to the, to the right. And we're going to do the same on this side. So again, I'm going to put my like I said, when I put this card together the first time, I have no idea why I ended up with one side being the wrong size in the end. All I did was trim my designer series paper and it, it looks fine. It's just for whatever reason, uh, it was the wrong, the wrong size. All right, so brush it up against. Okay, so now I have three sides again turning it and I have one last side that I want to add one of these, these uh, kind of tower walls to. Okay, so that's gonna go on like that. Again, butt it up against that edge. Like that. So we now have our sides or walls of our pinwheel. And now it's a matter of decorating. So I have got three pieces of um, designer series paper. I'm going to use these adorable, um, adorable uh, bees. So these will go, oops, don't put them on these three sides like that. And on the fourth side, I've got a piece of basic white like that. So these are two and a half by four. So we can put these on. I'll leave the white one off because I'm going to do a little bit of stamping on the white one and I'm going to put a B, but I'm using that one side to put, you know, where my sentiment um, would go to. So you need three pieces of, of uh, designer series paper that are two and a half by four. And you could use different pieces of designer series paper if you want to. I'm going to use these bees because they're just too cute. You could alternate if you wanted to, but we'll use those. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one um, blank for the moment because I've got a piece of basic white that is two and a half by four, but we'll, we'll decorate that. So these other ones on the, the side, um, you need four pieces of designer series paper that is one and three quarters by five. And those can adhere on like that. Again, you can alternate. Um, you could use four different um, designs or patterns of your designer series paper. Uh, whatever works for you. 
but this one you need four of them. So I'm using this really pretty um, petal pink honeycombs. That. Once you get the hang of putting these pinwheel tower cards together, they go together really quickly. All right, this one will then go on like that. So that's that's basically my card base put together. I just need to, to decorate this one side. So again, I've got a piece of basic white. I'm gonna do some stamping and I've got some extra basic white. So I'm gonna do, of course, I'm gonna stamp that adorable bee. And I've showed this before. Um, so when you're stamping, and wanting to punch out um, the images, I find it easy to create a template. So all I did was to take a scrap piece of paper and I punched out the images or the shapes from this. So now when I go to stamp, I've got a piece of post-it note tape here. I'm just going to adhere this post-it note tape on and I'm gonna use crushed curry and basic black and petal pink. If I can find my petal pink, there it is. Okay, so for the, the body of the bee, of course we're going to use, we're going to use crushed curry. So I can stamp my body. So basically you just take and stamp through the opening of your template. I absolutely love my glass mat, Denise. I'm so excited about it. It cleans up amazing. There is a cleaning cloth now. This is all dried out, so it's wet. It's a little damp when you get it, um, but it kind of dries out. So you can, I just use um, Stampin' Mist um, to uh, wet it and then I can clean. So amazing. So this glass mat, if you aren't aware, is one of the um, options. You can get this uh, if you sign up um, or get the starter kit uh, in January during celebration. Okay, so then we've got this stamp that is these little wings. It's kind of half of a half of a heart. So we're going to stamp this twice. So we're going to do one there. And we're going to just lift this up and stamp another one. And there is a heart here as well. I'm running out of blocks. I don't know where all my blocks have gone to. So I'm going to stamp these wings in petal pink just to give them some color. And I might actually stamp off so that they are just kind of very pale wings. So I've got, some, oh my gosh, I've got so much stuff over here. All right, I've got a scrap, so I'm gonna just stamp off and I'll stamp this wings straight through there. And then I'm gonna lift that up and stamp my other set of wings. Oh, I was gonna stamp off, get to do that. All right, so I can take my template off. And the last thing we need to stamp, I said I've got to find all of my blocks. I don't know where they are. So this is the body, the stripes on the bees, on the bee. So we're going to just take and stamp the stripes like that. So you can see how cute this is. Okay, so now let's bring in our punch. And if we've lined these all up like they're supposed to be lined up, we will be able to just put our punch in and punch our bee out. So we've got our body, we've got one of the wings, and we've got a little heart in white if we wanted to use it. And now I can take my my punch and punch out that other that other wing. Now the only thing I need to do for my bee, close up some of these. 
is to stamp a face on my bee. And there are some really cute little faces. So let's use this little one that's kind of kind of got a bit of a smirk, a little bit of a smile to him. There we go. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, he's so cute. So cute. All right. So now we can start putting our bee together. Use glue dots, use liquid glue, whatever you like to use. I like, I'm a glue dot. I love glue dots. I know some people aren't fans, but I absolutely love them. I can get them off. Sometimes I use my take your pick tool. This one is wanting to stick to my fingernail and not stick to the card for some unknown reason or to the cardstock. Okay, there we go. So we'll use my take your pick tool. Depending on how you want your your wings to go, you can put them. I think I'm going to do a wing on the top and a wing on the bottom. I don't know how they're supposed to go, but I've tried them both ways and I like them both ways. So up to you how you decide to do your B. So there's my B. Hey, Mary, welcome. And the only other thing we have to do is do some more stamping. So where is... I need a sentiment. Actually, I'm going to do this. All right, let's reuse some. There is this stamp that's kind of a bee trail. So I'm just gonna do some stamping like that. And we'll stamp, and then I need a sentiment. A sentiment, what sentiment shall we use? I think I will use the B mine. And I'm going to stamp it in Tuxedo Black Memento, if I can find a block. That will be my task after I get off this. My live is to find some blocks that seem to have gone missing. All right, so we're just going to stamp the B mine in the bottom. Close those up. Okay, and then we'll use some dimensionals and you can use the dimensionals to kind of keep the, the, um, the wings in place. It's just one extra, extra bit of adhesive on your wings as well, as well as the glue dots. Let's put I got a lot of dimensionals on here. That should hold. Okay. Not like that. And I didn't use my sweet sorbet ink that I thought I was going to. I also haven't used, used my ribbon, but maybe I won't use my ribbon, but I would like to use my sweet sorbet ink lost it. Sweet sorbet. There it is. Okay, let's stamp some little hearts. There are some little hearts that you can stamp. So we will use that. And let's just stamp these cute little hearts. Like that. Isn't that too cute? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I don't know what happens with, I have a little space here beside where I work and oh my gosh, it doesn't take long, like just the time I'm live to, uh, to lose things in it. I try to clean up after each card I make, it doesn't always happen, but okay, so there is my cute little be mine. I'm going to put some embellishments on, so let's pull out the ones. I've got these. Let's see. There are not a lot of embellishments in these packages. There are 64. So 
you can tell the colors that I absolutely am in love with because it seems to be I've let's put some flowers on it seems to be I have used up a lot of these the ones that I absolutely love so we use the flowers there we go all right I think I'm not going to use any ribbon I've got lots but there we go that is the pinwheel tower card so you can turn it and you get all sorts of you can actually oh, look what I did I put my bee upside down. <laughs> I wasn't watching when I when I uh, adhered that on, so I'm going to have to see if I can. I I'm going to take that off before I I send this card because I've got my bees going the wrong way. But you would never do that. You would watch much more closely than I did. <laughs> but we can fix that. Um, so I will fix that before I actually send this card out. But there we go. There is a pinwheel tower card. My gosh, I can't believe I did that, but oh well. The card is cute. We can fix we can fix this easily, um, even if it means I just um, put some more designer series paper over top of these ones that are upside down. Okay, we'll look at that one because it's the cutest side. <laughs> oh, I'm still chuckling to myself. Goodness sakes, I need to be watching. I was so worried about trying to find things on my desk. I wasn't watching what I was doing. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me today. Hope you have a great day and are able to uh, spend some time in your craft room. I know it's a busy part of the season. Everybody's getting ready um, for for the holidays. Um, I know I have one present left to, uh, to get, and I actually have two presents left to wrap and get under the tree, so I better get on that. Now, I will be live tomorrow. I'm going to show you uh, the paper pumpkin for December, so I'll make the cards that are in the kit and then show you an alternate project um using the all the best um, paper pumpkin kit it's so pretty uh so if you have a, a paper pumpkin subscriber um you may have probably have already received yours and you know how pretty it actually is if you've never seen paper pumpkin come join me tomorrow and you'll see what you can get if you subscribe um i probably will go live yesterday i said i probably wouldn't be live after thursday i probably will go live on on saturday and then i'm going to take a break um, between Christmas and New Year's and uh, take some time and just, uh, yeah, have a little bit of a break. So, uh, and you're going to be having breaks with your family and friends as well. So join me tomorrow for the paper pumpkin uh, kit and then Saturday for one more card before Christmas. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. Hope you have a great day and I hope you have an amazing time with your friends and family. Happy stamping. Bye.